we're coming tonight to consider this idea of, of faith, and it's something that's uh, quite prevalent in the Bible, and something, therefore something that we need to be clear on, on what it's talking about. So that's what we want to consider tonight, this idea of, of faith. So what are we going to consider when we're talking about this idea of, of faith tonight? Well, first of all, we're going to come to understand and come to look at what faith actually is. Okay, so that's, a, that's an important place to start with our consideration. And then we want to have a look at this idea of why do we need faith? Okay, so, so what is it that the Bible tells us about why we need faith? Then once we've established what, what it is and, and why we need it, we then want to move on and to, to think about the idea of, of faith and whether it's just something that we just need to know about. Or is there some, having considered what faith is, is there a, an active idea behind this idea of faith? So that's what we want to, to consider next. We then want to move on and ha have a look at a, a biblical case study, okay? So I'm, we're going to take up one of the examples in the, in the, the section we've just read from, from Hebrews, and we're going to look at that as a, as a case study to try and uh, turn all of the theory that we've been looking at in, in the early, early part of our talk and, and try to apply that to, to this particular uh, story, which is recorded for us in the Bible. And then finally, having understood all these things about faith, we then want to, to have a look finally at what can we have faith in. Okay, so that's where we, that's where we are planning to, to go throughout the course of our talk this evening. So to start off with, then what, what is faith? Well, the, the definition of the best definition of faith and the best place to, to get a definition is to go turn to the to the Bible. And the, we've read that passage tonight, haven't we, from Hebrews 11 and verse 1, which says there that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so, so this idea of, of faith is, is linked here to this idea of, of substance. Okay, and that, that word also is translated confidence. So it's, a, it's about being sure of something. Okay, I think that the best way to ex explain uh, how this idea of substance is linked, it, it's, it's a, effectively... If we are able to grab hold of something, so if we're able to grab a hold, for example, of the chair that we're sitting on, we're, and, and we can physically feel it, we're confident that that thing exists. The idea of, of faith is being able to do exactly that to things that we, we can't actually see. Okay, so it's, it's hard for us to believe in things that we can't see because they don't have any substance. And, and it's the idea of, turning those unthings seen things into something that is that is real and is, is, is has substance to us in our lives that's what this idea of faith is all about so let's look at this let's look at this this definition from Hebrews chapter 11 we have this idea then of, of substance and then second of all this idea says well it's all about substance of things that are hoped for okay so the idea of, of hope is is something that's often also linked to this idea of faith, but there is a nuanced difference. Okay, so and, and we'll come come to to look at that very shortly. We then have this idea of, of evidence, you know, very much a a legal term, something to do with you prov providing hard facts, a basis for understanding and believing these things. And then it talks about the evidence of things not seen. And I think that's where the, we get the, the sort of the, the difference between things that are hoped for and, thing, and things that require faith. Okay, because if, if, I, if I can see something, I can still hope to have that. Okay, I, you know, my, my, my son sees a, an ice cream and he, he hopes to be able to have that. Okay, so, so that's something he can see and touch and he still wants to hope for it. The idea of, of having faith is if we can't see something and yet we're still trying to trying to seek after that thing. 
Okay, so that's 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 the, the key element of faith. It's all about things that we can't see and, and making those a, a living force or a living reality in our lives. So then the next question we need to answer then is why do we need faith? Well, and again, the, the scripture gives us an, an answer. The answer, it comes for us in verse 6 of the passage that we've read tonight, where it says there, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Okay, so there's two elements we want to have a look at there. Well, first of all, it's impossible to please God without having faith. That's, that's you know, so... So I guess the assumption is there that as people who read and, and study the Bible, we are people who want to try to please God. And it says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And why is that? Well, I guess that the, the greatest challenge to, to faith is, and, and one of the greatest things that we, we may struggle with is, as far as, as, as understanding the things that we can't see, is the very existence of God himself, okay? So God we cannot see, and, and therefore we need to have faith that God exists, and not only that God exists, but also that God is prepared to reward those who seek him, okay? So, so there is, the, there is the, the, the real challenge around why we need faith, because it's something that we need to, you know, we need faith to, first of all, to believe that God exists, because we can't see him. And then this verse also tells us that we must uh, have faith to, to believe that God rewards those who seek him. Okay, so that's those ideas of, of understanding what faith and, and, and why the Bible tells us that we, we need faith. So then this idea of faith, well, this is a, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice to know subject, isn't it? It's a, well, that, you know, what, what does that mean? Is, is this idea of faith just something that, that we can talk about and it doesn't necessarily mean anything for me each and every day? And the Bible is very clear that that, that isn't, necessar- isn't at all the case. Turn with me, if you will, a couple of pages over from our reading in, in Hebrews chapter 11 to the next book of the Bible. And this is from the, the epistle written by a man called James. Let's read from James chapter 2, and we're going to read from verse 14 to verse 17, where it says there that, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or, or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Okay, so it's okay to say in your life that I have faith, but what James says is that it's only then useful if this idea then becomes active. So it's all about becoming, making this idea not just a theoretical concept, but an active and a living concept. And the way we can do that is that we can we can take our actions and our actions uh, demonstrate openly what, what we are thinking on the inside, what, what is going on in our hearts and in our minds. It's all demonstrated by the, the actions w- which we have. And what, what is the benefit then? Well, the benefit then is, is it demonstrates to others that we have um, a faith and that, that is driving us to do something. And it can encourage others to also share the same faith that we have. Okay, so, so James is very clear there, isn't he? That it's very much about an active, a faith is very much an active thing. So let's put a a quote up on the screen. And this is a quote from Hebrews chapter 11 that we've we've read tonight. And I'm not expecting you to be able to read 
uh, that necessarily on the screen. But I want what I want to show to you is this idea of, of action that comes out of this passage about faith. If you see there those, those words that are now highlighted in red, they are all the, the, the words to do with, with actions that came off the back of faith. So we see there that Abel offered, he made an offering. Noah constructed an ark. He condemned the world. Abraham obeyed. Abraham went out. He went to live. Sarah was able to conceive. All of these things were, were, were um, actions that resulted in an underlying faith in God. Okay, so there is the, 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 the story of Hebrews 11 being brought to life and to, trying to demonstrate this idea of faith being something which is active. So, so we see there this, in, in this, this story, this idea of the, the things of, of, of faith being demonstrated there by action. Okay, so, so next we want to move on and we want to have a look at this biblical case study. Okay, so, so what we want to do is, is, is from the uh, reading from Hebrews 11, we simply want to look at one particular verse. And we want to look at the verse from verse 7. But just as a, by way of background, we want to have a look at this, this man, Noah. And Noah was a man who lived um, a very, very long time ago. We, we can find out about the record of Noah. Just hold your hand there in Hebrews chapter 11 and turn back with me to the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. And this, this we can find in Genesis chapter 5. Okay, so this is all about Noah. Verse 28 of Genesis chapter 5, Lamech lived 182 years and had a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. Okay, so there is, there is uh, Noah, this man being born, uh, to, to be a son of this man, Lamech. And he lived in a time where men lived for hundreds of years. So early in the, the time of Genesis, men lived for, for hundreds of years. And we read about the story of Noah in, in, throughout the following chapters in Genesis, Genesis chapter 6 through to Genesis chap, chapter 9. And, and the main story that comes to, with regards to the story of Noah was that Noah was a man who was instructed to build an ark. Okay, so, so this was a, a um, in a time when he, uh, it, it, we believe it hadn't rained ever on the earth. And Noah was told effectively to build a big boat because God was going to send a, a rain on the earth and it was going to flood and that he needed something to live in that would, would float to help him to survive. So that's really the key story of the story of this man, Noah. So, so what then did Noah do that was faithful? And what does the Bible tell us about what he did? Okay, so, so let's turn back to our reading from verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 11. But in this one verse, there's really uh, all of the things that we've been looking at all sort of brought together into one, uh, one sort of really good pithy summary. Verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 11, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to to faith. Okay, so what, what is the first element of, of what we want to have a look at here? Well, the first thing we want to understand is that Noah was told about things by God concerning events that, as it describes, as a, had not, been, not yet been seen. Okay, so, so I guess that there's two, two elements to that that we want to come to consider first of all that Noah had faith that God existed okay so, so Noah was unable to see God but Noah had faith that God existed 
And second of all, God then told him about things that he had never yet seen. So he was a he was a God that someone that Noah was unable to see, telling Noah about things that he had never never seen before in his lifetime. So there's a lot of things there, and and that, and that sort of one uh, phrase that that gives us, um, you know. Things that, that that Noah re- required to have faith in. He couldn't reach out and 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 touch God because he God cannot be seen and cannot be touched. And also, this idea of this rain coming on the earth was not something that Noah had any experience of. He had to believe that you know when God told him that God was going to be true to His words. So then, having this idea of of these things that Noah had never seen before, what then was his response? Well, we see there, don't we, that in response to these instructions by God, Noah constructed an ark. Okay, so so here we have this idea of, of Noah constructing an ark. Well, this wasn't just a, this wasn't just a, a small boat that he was building. This wasn't just like a 15 foot uh, dinghy. This was a, a, a massive structure, and it took a lot of effort. It took a lot of time for him to do this. But, but this is all about what James was talking about, wasn't he, in his passage? Because Noah had faith, and that faith then drove him to a- action. And that action was to build an ark, an ark that took a lot of time, a lot of resources to build, and because of which he came into a lot of ridicule. A lot of people were looking and laughing at him and saying, well, I don't know why you're bothering. Why why are you doing this? But Noah had such strong faith and conviction in God that he was prepared to, to follow God's instruction and to build this ark. And what was the purpose of building this ark then? Well, it tells us that it was for the saving of his household. Okay, so so God told Noah that Noah, he was going to destroy the earth. And then if, if, if Noah wasn't to get his family into this ark, well, then they would also be destroyed. And so it was crucial that Noah was then uh, able to convince his family that, that he was able to make sure that they would also be saved along with him. Okay, so there was salvation through and, and a saving through the fact that Noah had acted on the faith that he was showing. And, what, and, and then it also tells us that by, by taking this stand and by taking this action, Noah in, in turn condemned the world. Okay, so he basically said, well, look, there's a separation between the people who are in the ark and the people who were outside of the ark and God was going to destroy or condemn the world that was sitting outside the ark. And then finally, it tells us that Noah became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Okay. So, so this idea of, of, of becoming an heir is all, all about the promises that are associated with faith. And Noah became a, someone who was going to in, inherit this. This idea of, of righteousness that comes by faith is, is all about the salvation that God offers if we have faith in him. So, so by taking these actions and following God's word and, 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 and doing what he did, Noah then became an heir of the promises that God had made to those who believe in him. So then, what is it that, having considered these ideas of faith, well, let's turn the, turn the focus then away from uh, understanding what faith is and seeing how the Bible explains it, and to, to think about how does it impact the way that we live our lives. So what are some of the things that, that, that we can have faith in ourselves? Well, as we mentioned earlier, we, we, we know we have to have faith in things 
that we cannot see. So actually, because we cannot see God, well, we actually need to believe, have faith to believe that God exists himself. Okay, so, and, and there are things that can help us to, to, to support our, the evidence that we have. But let's, you know, we need to, because we can't see God, well, we need to have faith that God actually exists. Similarly, because of, of where we are in terms of, of time, well, we weren't able to experience and see for ourselves the life and the work of Jesus. There were people who were able to do that, and they were able to see that, and they have you know, left things on uh, written down for us so that we can come to, to share that experience, but the reality is for us is that we're not able to, to see or we're not able to touch Jesus. And so therefore we need to have faith that those things actually happen and that Jesus himself does exist. And that goes for the, for the whole Bible, doesn't it? The whole Bible has been, you know, recounts uh, words and, and activities and, and stories that happened many, many thousands of years ago. And so we need to have faith that the, the record which we have is a, is a true record and that these things actually did take place uh, so many years ago. And then turning to, to a more of a, a future thing or, or a, a present and, and then onto the future, we need to have faith that in, in the plan of salvation, which we believe that God has offered to us. Okay, so we, we read in the Bible that God says that he has offered us a plan of salvation for us to be saved because we know that we are sinful and, and dying people. But because God has told us about these things and, and we can't actually reach out and grab hold of something that tells us that we, we have or haven't been able to, to attain to this, well, we need to have faith that God has offered these things to us. And the same applies to the hope that, of the kingdom that God has offered to us. The Bible tells us a lot about the, the coming kingdom of God that is going to be here on this earth. And, and we, can, we can read and try to build up pictures in our mind of what that time might be like. And, and we can hope for our very best to 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 try and do our best to serve God so that we could we could be granted a place in that kingdom. But it's still something that we can't touch, and therefore we need to have faith that, that God will fulfill those promises which he has made. All these things have no substance now, and we need to, to try to make them have substance in our mind, and, by, and that is the, the essence of, of having faith in these things. So then the question is, well, how do we get this faith? Well, Romans tells us that faith comes by hearing. Okay, let's turn to a couple of quotes. The first one is going to be found in the, in the Gospel of John. Turn with me to the Gospel of John and chapter 20. John chapter 20 and verse 31 says this. This is what John attests. He says, verse 30 says, Truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Okay, so so. Here, John is saying, look, these things that I have recorded for you, these things I have recorded so that you can read these things and you can come to share and understand the experiences that I've had firsthand so that you can come to understand these things and to, 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 to really believe that those things did, did actually happen, that you can actually believe and understand that Jesus uh, came to the earth and these things did actually happen, 
that you can believe that he is the Christ or the, the, the anointed, the son of God. And therefore, and, and the result of that, the result of that action is that by believing these things, well, then you can have life in his name. OK, so there is the there is the idea of of, of reading the, the reason that God has left uh, the, the Bible on record for us with these events is so that we can read these things for ourselves and that we can come by reading and understanding and listening to these things. Well, then we can come to understand the same things. And also then we have another quote for us found this time in the book of Romans and chapter 10. And the same idea is then brought to us with, and it links it very clearly to, to faith. Okay. Verse 17 of, of the book of Romans chapter 10 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, so again, very clearly, there is a link there that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by reading or understanding the word of God. So really, there's a, there's a crucial element to this, isn't there? The, the idea of, of reading and of, of listening to what God has to say, as explained to us in his word, the Bible, is, a, is, a, is how we can build our faith in God. Of course, there is a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a circular argument there, isn't it? Because we have to believe that the words of, of the Bible are the words of God. And so, you know, there is a, there is a, a challenge there and we need to, to be able to, to, to break that challenge. But there are other things that are around to, to help, uh, help us understand and help us to believe that God really does exist. And what are some of those things that, that can help us to, to understand these things? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that this idea of, of archaeology can help us. And, and the way that archaeology can help us is that the fact that it can help us to verify. So things which are found by, by archaeologists, by specialists in their field, can help us to verify that stories that are recorded for us in the Bible actually did happen okay so so i guess by by that and, and here's the idea of of substance isn't it because by by physical things which which are found in the ground well then that gives us a a physical substance to to hold on to or to attach to to be able to understand that the stories which we we read in the bible have have credibility and have something that we can we can actually look at and touch and and understand that these things did actually happen and and by doing that well then it starts to become a snowball effect i'm going to suggest to you also that this idea of fulfilled prophecy is also something that gives credibility to god's word the bible again it's a so the idea of a fulfilled prophecy is that in the, in the Bible, there is a, a lot of passages which talk about things which are going to, hap were going to happen in the future. Some of those have been fulfilled or, or have actually come to pass subsequent to the time in that were written, but before our time. Okay, so the fact that we can see things that were written in the Bible, written many, many, many years before they actually happened in but that have subsequently happened and we can read about them and, and record it for us in history. Well, that gives the Bible again, a, a level of credibility that may, helps us to give it more substance and, and more credibility, something that we can, can place reliance and place our trust in. And then by building this reliance, by, by reading about these things and, and, and making the, these, these, these links, almost as though it was that we're trying to build a bridge from, from, from us to, to, to believing that the Bible exists. And by each of these, it's almost as though we're putting down additional planks to help us walk across that, that bridge. 
by by looking at these prophecies which have been fulfilled well then we can say well look i can read that and that was a prophecy that has come to pass well on the basis that that, that has come to pass well then i believe i can have faith or i can have more certainty or more substance to the idea that other prophecies which we believe still have not yet been fulfilled that they will through by god's word will actually come to pass okay so so here's this idea of this idea of of building things which are able to build and help us to support our faith and the third thing i'm going to suggest to you is this idea of of creation the fact that around us each and every day we see things which by in human terms are just things which just ought not to be they they ought the, the chances the probability of these things happening through something other than a, the divine intervention are just so minuscule it's not worth really considering but the fact that there is a a, a creator or, or a divine um intervention in creation that, that these things just seem to happen they seem to work they seem to all fit together and, and that those things are recorded for us in the bible i i believe uh, that they they give extra credibility to the things concerning the bible so what we're able to do then is by by using all of these things and and some of these may appeal to you in in greater or less to a greater or lesser extent all of those things are able to to add to the credibility that we have to to help us to develop a a love and an understanding of god's word and by doing that by to to help us to build our faith that our faith that comes by hearing by hearing the word of god okay so what are we going to 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 look at then in summary well, we saw, didn't we, at the start, that faith is all about believing in things that we cannot see or touch. It's all about having evidence. It's all about having substance to things that we are unable to see or touch. It's easy, isn't it, for us to, to believe that things that we can see or touch exist. For those things which are invisible or intangible, it's more difficult. And to do that, we need to have faith in these things we saw didn't we that faith is required to please god okay so that was very clear that faith is required to please god and and really we've seen that faith is required to believe that god even exists in the first place and and that we've just been looking at haven't we at some ways in which we can can start to to, to build that idea of of faith in God. We then saw, didn't we, that in, from, from James chapter 2, that faith then needs to drive the way that we act. And that's really important because faith is not just a theory. It's not just a, an, an abstract idea, something that's a nice to know about. The Bible tells us clearly that faith needs to drive the way that we act each and every day. And then we saw that, didn't we, in the, in the example of Noah, that that Noah believed God and that caused him to go out and to build a, a, a massive boat against all contra against all expectations. Okay, so there was very much a faith linked to action. And finally, then we see this idea of, of that we know, don't we, and we can read from in the Bible that there are many amazing things that God has offered for those who have these faith and we saw didn't we from our quote from hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that to having faith we need to believe that god exists first of all but also we need to believe that god is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so let's strive to to read about god and and read his word the bible to help to build our faith to come to believe that god exists and to believe, as he tells us, that he is a rewarder of those who seek him and help us to believe and have faith in the things which God has offered for us in his word, the Bible. Thank you for your time.